Good evening. Welcome to the Lewiston City Council regular meeting of Monday, February 9th, 2015. I'll call this meeting to order. Uh, before we get going, um, first thing, I would uh, entertain a motion to add a presentation from President El Gage concerning our annual audit. So so moved. Moved. Second. Okay, motion has been made and seconded. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, now please uh, join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. We'll be led by Eric Reese from Troop 148. Thank you. Okay, next item of business is citizens comments. This is an opportunity for citizens to address the council on agenda items or other items they wish to bring to the attention of the council. Citizens are encouraged to address this operational issues in advance with the city manager. And in consideration of others wishing to speak, please limit your remarks to three minutes. Do we have any citizen comments this evening? Mike Lorenz, 458 Crestline Circle Drive. Oh, I just got a few few items here I'd like to touch base with since now it's a new year and we got got all the other stuff under the table from last year. But I guess going back on this uh, $200 a month car allowance, you know, I think that's something that, you know, you guys need to step up plate and make disappear. I think we need to be paying the help to drive to work. Said so another one, you know, I think whenever this cell phone contract is up with Verizon, I think we either need to look at a stipend or something instead of paying $60,000 a year for employee cell phones. I mean, at some point, you know, here where streets are bad, the water and everything else, and we're doing nothing about it. So instead of spending $13 million in a park, I think we ought to be a little more concerned about, you know, rebuilding the infrastructure in this town. Um, I'm kind of, I am kind of glad to see that we're moving ahead forward on this mutual aid with Clarkston. That should have never happened in the first place, but I'm glad to see Travis and, you know, they're working to consensus to get this worked out to where we should be back to where we are again. Um, I guess another thing is, too, with this <clears throat> urban renewal thing, you know, we want to spend $2 million on this McCann property up there. Well, I think you ought to be spending the $2 million fixing the streets and a sewer and water system in this town instead of putting $2 million into a road to nowhere. I think it's, I think, you know, you just drive downtown or around these streets in here and they're, you know, they are. And I can see why Chris Davies is concerned and I think we need to really start, you know, kind of looking at where we really don't need to spend the money. Because I mean, I, to me it's, it'd be financially irresponsible to even think of building this $13 million park until, I mean, we can't even take care of the stuff we have, and yet, oh, let's go throw another, you know, what's another $13 million? I guess we can't steal that from the sanitation fund anymore, so God knows where that money's coming from. But anyway, I just think you guys really need to sit back this year and tackle some issues that are really tough and, you know, that something that affects the majority of the taxpayers and the people because, you know, watching their property act continue to inspire upward is not the answer. It's a shame we can't get, you know, this local option tax, and I'm sure that would relieve some of the problems. But until then, I mean, it is up to you to, like I said, to be good stewards of our money, and uh, you need to make some tough decisions. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Any other comments? Okay, <clears throat> we'll move on to uh, presentations. This will be a presentation from President El Gage for the city's annual audit. Mr. Bennett, would you like to introduce this? Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. Um, 
the council has reviewed the preliminary and the finished uh, comprehensive annual financial reports uh, prepared by Fresno Gage. And um, at this point, um, uh, Mr. Marks, I believe, and Ms. Alaverdi will uh, make a very brief presentation uh, and ask you to consider approval of the audit for uh, the uh, current uh, fiscal year, uh, the previous fiscal year. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Uh, as Mr. Bennett said, we pre presented the audit report to the uh, audit committee and then the, the work session today. Uh, as mentioned, there's three audit opinions in that report. The first opinion, uh, or all opinions, are unmodified as relation to the city as a whole, the internal control and compliance issues, and because the city expends over $500,000 to single audit. So all of our opinions were considered unmodified or a clean type of opinion. So as uh, Mr. Ben said, I, we would recommend that the city would accept that report. Okay. Thank you. So we just need to make a motion to accept? Yes. There would be a motion to accept the um, 2014 FY Comprehensive 2014. Annual Financial Report. Okay. All right. And uh, the audit. That being said, I'll uh, entertain a motion to accept the 2000, FY 2014. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Thank you. Okay, next up, we have a public hearing. Public hearing ZNC14-00001. Applicant Steve Carlton. It's a request to rezone an approximate 80 by 67 foot parcel of land, which used to be part of 3413 10th Street from R3 medium density residential to C4 general commercial. Uh, who's presenting this? Mr. Plaskin? Uh, city planner, Mr. Plaskin, will be uh, presenting that to the council and stand for any questions. Joel? <coughs> I start by showing you some maps and some photographs of the property that you're considering for this rezone. So the aerial photograph that you're looking at um, here on the screen, which is in your packets, um, north is up, and this is Bryden Avenue. This is 10th Street. And the property you're being asked to rezone is bolded in black right here, uh, pretty much in the, the middle of the uh, aerial photograph. It's a piece of land that was um, originally part of this house lot here. At 3413 10th Street, and which was purchased um, by Mr. Carlton. He just bought the east end of it here. And you can see the, the white square uh, within the border of the property um, is the roof of a pole storage building. The next map we're looking at here is uh, of the zoning map of the city of Lewiston. Again, north is up, Ryden Avenue, 10th Street. Uh, the subject property is bold and black again right here, and this color is representative of the medium density residential R3 zoning district, and this color is representative of the general commercial C4 zoning district. So Mr. Carlton, uh, in addition to owning this piece of property that he's asking to be rezoned, also owns the existing commercial lots to the north and to the east and you can see that if this piece were rezoned as requested it would basically just square up that existing C4 zone in that location. An important consideration for rezone applications is whether or not the rezone requested is in conformance with the comprehensive plan. 
Uh, one of the primary pieces of which is the future desired land use map. This is a, uh, a picture of a copy of the future desired land use map for this section of the city. The property you're being asked to rezone is shown right here. I know it's a little bit difficult to make out, but it's designated on this comprehensive plan map for commercial purposes. It's not designated for residential use. It's actually designated on the comp plan map for commercial. We've got some photographs that I took of the property in case you're unfamiliar with it. Um, this is a photograph that I took uh, standing at the south end of one of his existing commercial parcels. So this is south of Bryden Avenue. We're looking due south. And this property right here is the property you're being asked to rezone. This is the west wall of the pole storage building that's on the property now. This is a photograph of that storage building. This is looking due east. This is also looking due east. This is the south wall, the pole storage building that's on the subject property. This is the uh, southerly part of the property you're being asked to rezone. This photograph is looking due west. So this is the uh, west property line. This is a, a chain link fence with uh, tan slats in it. Um, that's along the west property of the parcel you're being asked to rezone. And this last photograph is looking do due north. So this area right here is the, uh, is the location I was standing uh, when I took the first photograph that I showed you. So this is the property, again, you're being asked to rezone. And that's the west wall of the pole storage building that's on the property. The Planning and Zoning Commission held a public hearing on this rezone request on January 14th and recommended that the council approve the rezone request. Um, there's been a reason statement um, produced um, justifying the, their recommendation. Um, I believe that's in your packets. There was no opposition uh, presented at the Planning and Zoning Commission hearing. Um, the application is consistent with the comprehensive plan, and um, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Anybody have any questions for Mr. Pulaskin? Okay. Well, thanks, Joel. We might have some in a little bit. Is the applicant here this evening? Steve Carlton, 1103 Bryden. Um, like Joel said, I purchased this property a year ago. Just squares up the, the rest of that property there. I own all the way over to the paint shop. Uh, we want to do some um, additional storage unit type buildings back there. Uh, that pole building will come down. and um, The typical storage type buildings that are behind the paint shop is what we're what we're looking at putting back there. So. Okay. Any questions? Any questions for Mr. Colton? No? Thanks, Thanks, Steve. Okay, we'll go ahead and open this public hearing. This time, uh, we're here to take testimony. Is there anybody in the audience that wishes to speak in favor or opposition to this request? Okay, well, seeing none, I guess no reason for rebuttal, Mr. Carlton. Thank you. Um, okay, at this time, we'll go ahead and close this public hearing. And Joel, did you have any final words? Uh, just that the staff's recommendation uh, is for approval of the rezone application. Um, there's a little bit of a change to the circumstance of the, re uh, the recommendation that's in the staff report, um, which makes the recommendation for approval subject to consideration of a condition that no access to the subject property be allowed from Airway Avenue. <clears throat> Since the time that that recommendation was written, 
um, the applicant has informed me that he no longer owns the properties uh, to the south and the southeast that um, and w when he owned those that's what um, played into that uh, part of the recommendation and since he no longer owns them um, it would appear that um, any kind of condition restricting that access would be a moot point because it doesn't have control over the property anymore. Okay. I just have, is that, where is the end of the Bryden Avenue special planning area A end? Is it end at 10th or does it continue over to Thane? Or do you remember? It doesn't go all the way over to Thane. Oh, yeah, it does. It ends at 10th. Okay. On the west side. On the west side, correct. Okay. Any other questions for Joel? Okay, we'll go ahead and close this public hearing. And uh, I guess I'd entertain a motion to approve the rezone application and direct staff to prepare the necessary ordinance to enact the rezone. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, seven to zero. <clears throat> okay, next up is our consent agenda. Uh, anybody wishing to move anything from the consent agenda to active? Council Randall. I'd like to move item A under consent agenda to the active agenda. Okay, that'll become item K. An active? Mr. Mayor? Yes. I'd like to move uh, item E to active. Vouchers payable? Yes, please. Those will become active agenda item L. Anything else? Okay, I guess I'll go ahead and uh, entertain a motion to read the consent agenda as amended. So move. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 0. Approving the Braniff Edition Administrative Plat, a request to subdivide 0.97 acres at 727 Airway Avenue. Approving Resolution 2015 12 by title only. A resolution pursuant to Idaho Code Section 67 28082, declaring the intent of the City Council to award a sole source contract for Magna Grip Vehicle Exhaust Extractors to Weedner Fire of Midvale, Utah, and providing an effective date. Approving Resolution 2015-15 by title only. A resolution approving a hazardous materials emergency assistance intergovernmental agreement between the City of Lewiston and Idaho Municipal Corporation and the City of Pullman, a Washington Municipal Corporation. Authorizing the Mayor and City Clerk to execute and attest respectively said agreement and providing an effective date. Okay, counselors, the consent agenda has been read as amended. I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. We got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries seven to zero. <coughs> okay, on to active agenda. Item A. This is resolution 2015-16. Approving a right-of-way agreement between the city and the Port of Whitman County. I'll entertain a motion to we read first or just a motion to approve? Okay. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve resolution 2015-16. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries seven to zero. Uh, resolution 2015-13. This is approving a contract for engineering services between the city and Redesel Engineering for the downtown Lewiston infrastructure repair and replacement project. I'll entertain a motion to approve resolution 2015-13. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries seven to zero.
Okay, next up is item C. This is ordinance 4622 for second reading. This is amending city code section 37-183, print eight, duties of the Planning and Zoning Commission to review and comment as appropriate to Nez Perce County on land use proposals within the area city impact. I'll entertain a motion to read ordinance 4622 for the second time. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 0. Ordinance 4622 by title only. An ordinance <coughs> of the City of Lewiston, Lewiston amending Lewiston City Code section 37 183 3, paren 8, changing the designation of the Planning and Zoning Commission for the area of city impact and providing an effective date. Okay. Uh, next up is Ordinance 4623 for the second reading, and this is repealing city code section 37-186. I'll entertain a motion to read Ordinance 4623 for the second time. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. 4623 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Lewiston repealing City Code Section 37-186 and providing an effective date. Okay, thank you, Carrie. Uh, next up is a second reading of Ordinance 4621. This is amending City Code Section 32-3, removing the reference to Idaho Code Section 50-1306 in the area of city impact. I'll entertain a motion to read Ordinance 4621 for the second time. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 0. Second reading of Ordinance 4621 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Lewiston amending Lewiston City Code Section 32 3. Removing the reference to Idaho Code Section 50-1306 and the area of city impact and providing an effective date. Okay. Next up is item F, another second reading. This is Ordinance 4624. Repealing Section 6.8 of the Comprehensive Plan and enacting a new Section 6.8 and adopting a map of the Lewiston Comprehensive Plan area. I'll entertain a motion to read Ordinance 4624 for the second time. So moved. By title only, suspending the rules. No? Yeah? Second. I, okay. I forgot that the last time. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 to 0. Reading the second reading of Ordinance 4624 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Lewiston repealing Section 6.8 of the Comprehensive Plan of the City of Lewiston regarding the area of city impact. Adopting a new Section 6.8, a statement of purpose, goals, and policies. Adopting a reformatted comprehensive area plan map and providing an effective date. Okay. And next up, item G, Ordinance 4625. For the second reading, amending the Comprehensive Plan, Section 14, Community Design, eliminating the language regarding the area of city impact. I'll entertain a motion to read Ordinance 4625 for the second time. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7-0 reading of Ordinance 4625 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Lewiston amending the comprehensive plan of the City of Lewiston, Section 14, Community Design, eliminating the language regarding the area of city impact and providing an effective date. Okay. And now item H, uh, Ordinance 4626, second reading. This is enacting a new chapter to be codified as Chapter 39 providing for the orderly development of the city of Lewiston area of city impact, providing for use zones within the area of city impact, 
providing for the administration and enforcement of zoning and development within the area of city impact. I'll entertain a motion to read Ordinance 4626 for the second time. So moved. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Councilor Blakey. Um, at our last meeting, we talked to uh, the, our city planners. We're going to meet with the county and discuss uh, some of the issues that are still out there. I was just curious, Laura, Ms. Fontour, you might be able to give us an update. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Laura Von Turch, Community Development Director. I did email the county planner because she was in attendance at the last meeting and simply said, well, you heard the discussion. Is there you know, some place where we can meet in the middle? And I, I received an email back which told me very clearly that they feel they've already done enough or more than enough and weren't going to be doing anything more. And that was pretty much confirmed with a brief chat I had with one of the county commissioners over the weekend. Okay. May I ask yep. you, your feelings on that? On that response? Well, I don't know that my, my feelings are very relevant, but um, I, I'm clear that they've done as much as they want to do. I would offer that uh, since we have a couple of weeks before our third reading, that uh, we'll try and perhaps come up with a couple of amendments to address some of the concerns that uh, Ms. Von Tersch had at the last meeting and see if we can put them into a format that's uh, more suitable for our needs and we can go read for the third time. Any comments? Mr. Mayor, members of the council, I think I explained the last time around, if you cannot come to an agreement, then it goes to district court to resolve those issues that are as yet unresolved. Okay. So. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, all those in favor of reading ordinance 4626 for the second time, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Approving the second reading of Ordinance 4626 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Lewiston, Idaho, enacting a new chapter to be codified as Chapter 39. Providing for the orderly development of the City of Lewiston area of city impact. Providing use zones, providing for use zones within the area of city impact. Providing for conditional uses and variances. Providing for supplemental regulations, exceptions, and amendments. Providing for the administration and enforcement of zoning and development within the area of city impact and providing an effective date. Okay. And the last of our second readings is Ordinance 4620, second reading, amending Lewiston City Code, Chapter 10, entitled Buildings and General Building Regulations, amending the International Building Code, International Res Residential Code, International Energy Conservation Code, International Mechanical Code, International Fuel Gas Code, Idaho Plumbing Code, and the International Electrical Code, providing for plan review fees. I entertain a motion to read Ordinance 4620 for the second <coughs> time. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Approving the second reading of Ordinance 4620 by title only. An ordinance amending Lewiston City Code Chapter 10 entitled Buildings and General Building Regulations. Amending the International Building Code, International Residential Code, International Energy Conservation Code, International Mechanical Code, International Fuel Gas Code, the Idaho Plumbing Code, and the International Electrical Code. Providing for plan review fees and providing an effective date. Okay. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, next up, uh, is vouchers payable to early bird supply? I'll turn this over to Pro Tem Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Next item on the agenda is vouchers payable for early bird supply from January 16th, 2015 through January 29th, 2015 in the amount of $877.26. I'd entertain a motion to approve vouchers payable for early bird supply. So moved. Second. Second. Motion's been moved and seconded. 
All those in favor? Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, uh, motion passes six to zero with Mayor Kleberg abstaining. I'll turn the meeting back over to you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Pro Tem. Uh, next up is item K, and this is the bid award for a facilities re roof project. I'll entertain a motion to approve. So move. Second. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. Discussion? Mr. Mayor. Yes, Council Randall. Could we have uh, Dan explain why we're, re we're going after the $89,000 bid versus the other bids that were higher? Certainly. Mr. Mr. Mayor, Marsh. Council Members, uh, thank you. Uh, Ms. Randall asked me uh, one day last week um, if we aren't required as a city to reject all bids when there's such a, a large price uh, or bid discrepancy. And uh, the answer is no. That in and of itself doesn't require a total rebidding or refusing all the bids. Um, now what it does do is it raises some eyebrows as to why there was such a difference. And so uh, what you'd see uh, is staff, and in this case the architect as well, uh, sat down with the low bidder to make sure that there weren't any uh, key portions or components of the uh, bid that was uh, maybe forgotten. Um, in some cases it might be the engineer, uh, but in any event, uh, that did take place in this case and uh, because there was a considerable difference between the lowest and the next lowest bid. I think it was about 52,000, so. Well, 20%. Yeah, so it was significant. Um, and again, in, the, in this case, there was, uh, it was felt by both staff and the architect that uh, uh, it was responsive and uh, it's going to be a good deal for the city. Okay. Thank you, Dan. Mr. Mayor, I have a yes. question. Um, does that bid include any kind of warranty for the roofs? You know, in terms of the specifics, uh, I'm, I might have to look to Tim Barker in terms of the details on that. Uh, I would be just... Undoubtedly, yes. I mean, there needs to be warranties built in the specs, but I wasn't involved with that portion of it, so I'll defer to the to the departments. Thumbs up. Okay. I'm getting the, I'm getting the head nod. Um, generally, what a 20-year type warranty. Is that right, Joy? Yes. It's for 20 years. Yeah. Uh, purchasing manager Joy Schwank is indicating that we've got a 20-year uh, warranty on the work. Okay. So. Question. Yep. Um, in the bid process, does it have to be disclosed how long the company has been in, in business? Is that disclosed in the bidding process or in the packet? I can speak to qualifications on bids where we use uh, professional services. We, there's a certain amount of requirement in terms of experience in the field, but that's in terms of establishing a qualifications a bidder's list. In this case, um, again, Joy, why don't you come up? Yeah. I'd be cleaner if we just have her come up and address it. Generally, there are you know letters of uh, recommendation or some kind of testimonial or number of years in service, uh, business license that that are that are all that are all asked for. Joy Schwang, purchasing coordinator. Um, this is a public works bid, and we are not asked. We cannot ask for qualifications. The only thing we can look at is if they have a public works license, which they do. Interesting. Sure. Please. Enjoy as well. Where were they? There are two types of bids. If you all remember the Hillside case. Yes. Yeah. We are the city that set the rule and how you make those bids. It's the only case that there is out on that particular subject. The Category A bid is simply you can ask them whether or not they have a public works contractor license and did they respond to the bid. In other words, did they answer all of the questions, give you the information you ask for. The Category B bid allows you to pre-qualify bidders. It has some publication requirements uh, and some other requirements that set the bid process back a ways. And so that's the only time you can ask for qualifications, and, but you have to pre-qualify bidders and then they're allowed to bid on the, the project, so. Okay. Does that answer your questions? Oh. Another okay. question. On this last page, there's um, two columns here where it says bid security and addenda. And it looks like three of the bidders have an X marked next to them and two don't. Why is that? Two of those bidders were not even on our plan holders list and they did not receive addendum. 
and that is what uh, they do not have the X because they didn't acknowledge the addendum, which actually lowered the scope of the project. And so their lo their bid probably would have been lower if they had received it. Okay, thank you. And by not including that, that makes it a non-responsive bid, correct? Correct, by not including. One more question here. Because of the lowness of the bid, is it just, um, this is, I believe it's probably flat roof work or, or technical work that no local contractors would bid on just because of the speciality, speciality of the jobs? We spec a roof that comes with a 20-year warranty. The manufacturer actually guarantees the work of the um, contractor. Uh, but my question was, I, I, there were no I, no local roofing businesses bidding on this contract. Is that just because, again, it was it was too specialized, or we don't, or just we? In your opinion, I guess there are no local bidders that wanted to bid on that. Maybe that's the answer. I have no idea. That we put it out there. It was advertised. Uh, Councillor, I can address uh, part of the rest of your question. That is the, the difference in the bid. Um, I think a couple things. The fact that we combined three projects. Last year we had two in the budget, and ironically the prices were high. So by deferring this year, combining a third project, but maybe even more so was the timing. This uh, contractor, and with our mild we weather, is, um, should be able to start once approved and you know probably start within the next couple of weeks. And so I think those two factors uh, played a big part in, in the lower bid. Um, in terms of local, um, I was, the local contractors had several opportunities. It was published, and so they evidently just chose not to. Fair enough. Any other questions? Okay, thanks. Okay, so we had a motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor of awarding uh, the facilities reef roof project to all surface roofing and weatherproofing, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, 7-0. Okay, next item up on our agenda is item L, this is vouchers payable. <coughs> For, um, where were we at there? 116, 2015 through 129, 2015 in the amount of, is this the amended one here? Thank you. Where's the total? Right there. Oh, here it is. I'm sorry, <laughs> excuse me. In the amount of 1,000,000. $51,095.93. I'll entertain a motion to approve the vouchers payable. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? I need to disclose that I was reimbursed for legislative work and the trip to Boise, and I was just being reimbursed for personal expenses. Okay, and I will disclose the same in the amount of $53. <coughs> Well. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Uh, I would just like to, just a couple of quick questions just to see, for me just to get to make sure I'm on the, the right page with where we're at with our our, uh, our cell phone expenses. Just looking at last month with Verizon, I kind of want to get an idea, is, is this going to uh, a relatively consistent number with what we might expect? We've had some big differences over the course of the last three voucher statements that I have been able to uh, at least get back to. Um, I come to a total last month of, of uh, almost $6,300. Is that a number that sounds consistent? And is that, how does that relate to what we had been spending with, with them on cellular in the past? I believe, uh, if you remember the initial report that we made to the council when the first bills came in, <coughs> pardon me, and they were considerably higher than what we um, would normally expect because of equipment purchases. When we looked at the operational expenses, um, those were right in this range here, 6200 6300 uh, monthly. So I think, yes, this figure is consistent okay. or will be about that number over the 
remaining months. Okay. Well, I, I, again, I was just checking to see the first billing we had was in the neighborhood of 27,000, which I would assume is a lot of equipment. It was the initial were. equipment purchases, right. yes. And then we had the next month of 12,000 with a bunch of credits that came back with that brought it down to the 5,500, and so we're looking at 62. And I'm just, I'm just trying to get a feel. Are we right. in the neighborhood? Of, this is where we. Yes, should that is. That's it? the correct neighborhood for operational expenditures on a monthly basis. Okay. We and shouldn't possibly. anticipate any additional um, equipment purchases um, on a regular basis. Okay. Thank you. May I, may I elaborate one more question on that subject matter? Could we take a look and see what our cell phone expenses were one year ago, the same period of time, and get a comparison of where we were a year ago? Um, a year ago, I believe we had one or three, we had a couple different systems going at one time. If it's possible, if we add those up and get a comparison just for a year over year? Right. Um, if, that's, if the council would like that, we can certainly do that. Um, do you, however, I got to ask, since the nature of the equipment and services is different than it was a year ago, um, if you want to be apples to apples, I think you need to also be looking at the service improvement, the equipment improvement, to determine whether or not, if there's an increase from last year, to, from this year to last year, which I probably guess there is, if that doesn't go with the uh, improvement in services and equipment. So it's not a straight, com but dollar to dollar is not a real comparison. No, but I still have to answer to the public periodically. Sure. So but I think the public needs all of the information. I don't disagree. Yeah. So is this possible that we get that Absolutely. number? We'll, we'll take care of that and get it to you. And actually, I was going to propose this because we had discussed this last, uh, whenever we approved the contract in October, I believe. Yes. Um, that we were going to revisit it, you know, in approximately six months and have a update evaluation I mean, I distinctly remember that conversation that we were going to take a look at it. Right, so that probably won't occur April. in April. Okay. I just would prefer not to lose sight of that. Sure. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, all those in favor of uh, approving the vouchers payable, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries, 7 to 0. Okay, that concludes our active agenda for this evening. I'll move on to unfinished and new business. City Councilor comments. Do we have any City Councilor comments this evening? Nope. Okay. Uh, city Manager comments. Um, just a couple of Mayor and members of the Council. <clears throat> we have um, the CETA annual meeting coming up on February 19th. Uh, Idaho Director of Commerce, Jeff Sayre, will be there as the main speaker. This will be their annual meeting and dinner. Um, it'll be held starting at uh, 4 o'clock at the uh, casino, at the event center there. And so we need to have any RSVPs into uh, Judy Smith by Wednesday if you'd like to attend. I know a couple of you have already talked to her about that. Um, the cost is $30, and that will be uh, picked up by the city. Uh, let's see. We, really, we received a letter from the Nez Perce tribe uh, asking for a letter of support from the city on a grant that they're applying for for some new buses for the Appaloosa Express. Um, that's been forwarded on to the Community Development and the Public Transit Department for a review. And... And as I mentioned earlier, I think um, when the task forces um, <clears throat> that are going to be formed for streets and storm are reported on by um, Public Works Director Chris Davies at the next work session in March, on March 2nd, uh, we should have a list of uh, appointees for the council to consider if you wish to do that at that time for those who would like to serve on those task forces and we'll, we'll have those available at that time. That's all. Okay, thank you. Uh, advisory Board and Commission appointments, do we have any this evening? Mr. Mayor. Yes, that's right. I'd like to recommend uh, Mel Fry for the Audit Committee. He's been on it before, but he, he had, due to the uh, bylaws, he had to lay out for a year. Okay. 
So all those in favor of appointing Mel Fry to the Audit Committee, say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Appointment stands. Any others? Yes. Councilor Blakey. Valley Vision has asked to renominate Butch Alford for his uh, position on the Urban Renewal Board. Okay. We'll entertain a motion to approve Butch Alford to the URA Board. So moved. Second. Okay. Motion is made and seconded. Discussion? When was he last reappointed? I do not know the answer to that. I'm new to the board. Oh. When was he last reappointed? He was last reappointed. Um, I can answer this way. He's been uh, a member since inception. Uh, so it be should be a three-year term, Councillor. Okay. But uh, Mr. Alford has been on the URA as a representative for Valley Vision since uh, 2005, and really since 1999 when we first found it. So would he, would this reappointment, would he be in the middle of a term? Would it only be for? It would be a full three years. Isn't it four years? I believe they're just a three year term. Okay. Okay. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries seven to zero. Okay, work session agenda topics. We've got a little bit of a list started for March. If anybody comes up with anything else, please let Mr. Bennett know, and maybe in April we can pencil in an update on cellular service. Yes, that would make sense. Okay. Uh, we do have a work session coming up. For those of you that are interested, a uh, budget work session will be at the Police Department Training Center on February 28th, starting at... 8, 8 a.m. It's a Saturday. We have a roundtable discussion like we had last year. Anything else? Okay, with that, uh, I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session RE litigation and hiring <coughs> under Idaho Code Section 67, 2345, Pren 1F, and Pren A. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. to zero. We will take a five-minute break. <laughs> 